This week on UB Football Insider with Lance Leipold, it's Maction the rest of the way for the Bulls. We'll preview Saturday's game at Central Michigan. We'll have our top five plays. We'll tackle the story of the Bulls' hard-hitting middle linebacker, Khalil Hodge, and we'll get you ready for the start of basketball season. It's UB Football Insider with Lance Leipold, and we kick it off right now. Screen Osborne hemmed in, trying to find the hole. Does at the 50, 45, 40, down the sidelines. There he goes. This is a pitch to the right, Asbury, and he oh. got smoked. Hand it to Marks in the end zone. Bullseye. It's time now for the top five plays of the week presented by ECMC. The difference between health care and true care. Number five. Shotgun snap, bubble screen to the left. Osborne caught at the 45, at the 50, breaks a tackle and spins to the 45 and inside the 40 goes KJ Osborne. He is so good. Run after the catch all the way down to the 39 yard line. Number four. Bulls drive on the move here. Tyree to throw on second down. Pump fake. Now he fires to a wide open Charlie Jones at the 10. Makes a move and gets to the five yard line and down to the three yard line. 32 yards on the game to Charlie Jones. Wide open on the right side. First and goal for the Bulls. Number three. Pitch it to the left. They trap the back walker. Now he's going to try to run back to the right. The Bulls continue to grab him and bring him down. James Patterson all the way back at the 20 yard line for an 11 yard loss. Number two. It's third and 11 from the shotgun. They will throw. Hopkins in the pocket, fires down the middle, intercepted. Picked off by Brandon Williams, the safety dropping in coverage. He makes the interception at the Army 48 yard line. Uh, Williams reads the quarterback's eyes and drops right in in front of Camden Harrison, who was the intended receiver right at the sticks. Great play there and a really nice job of reading his eyes and reading what was going on there. Number one. It's second and four. Quick throw, wide receiver screen. Osborne hemmed in, trying to find the hole. Does at the 50, 45, 40. Down the sidelines, there he goes. KJ Osborne has gone for a 53-yard Buffalo touchdown. He's a magician on the sidelines. KJ tiptoed his way to a huge Buffalo score. Well, Coach, now it's uh, Maction all the rest of the way, and I know that's a, a point in the schedule where everybody kind of changes their focus a little bit. Even though you've already played one Mac game, you know it's going to be Mac games the rest of the way. Do you change your thinking or approach? Do you think your team does now? I, I think we're excited for the conference season. I think we understand that it's going to be competitive each and every week, but our daily approach is going to be the same. But again, it's a it's a daily process for us to go through the work that's needed to be able to compete, especially this one on the road. Yeah, Central Michigan is the trip this weekend. Mount Pleasant, Michigan for Saturday's noon start. Central's had an interesting start to their season. They're 1-4. and four, They're 0-1 in the MAC. They've played Kentucky undefeated. Kansas much improved. Michigan State, Big Ten power. Northern Illinois, the only 2-0 and team in the MAC. Uh, their only win coming against an FCS team. So what have you learned from the first five games from the Chippewas? Much better than their record shows, Paul. They're, they're right now leading the Mid-American Conference in total defense. Defense, the excellent front seven. Offensively, they've changed quarterbacks. They've they're very multiple in what they're doing, and I think right now they're starting to find their groove of what they want their identity to be. Our breakdown of the Chippewas is all part of our Town BMW keys to the game. Well, let's talk about that defense, Coach. And as you mentioned, they are number one in the MAC in total defense. They're in the top ten in the country in pass defense, and to have those numbers come with the schedule that I mentioned, uh, it's not just an anomaly. That says a lot about them, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And I. I 
think a lot of times with defenses, it starts up front. A very impressive front four. They're able to get pressure on the quarterback. They they're also have a lot of size up there that they play the run very well. And, uh, of course, their middle linebacker, along with our middle linebacker, Cleo Hodge, are probably two of the top linebackers in the conference. Yeah, that's kind of an interesting, even though they'll never actually match up against each other, it's kind of an interesting game within the game. You've got Khalil Hodge, who leads the MAC in tackles, and Malik Fountain, the Chippewas middle linebacker, number two. Uh, does he play a lot like Khalil Hodge? Does he do some of the same things? Yes, he does. You can tell he's a leader. Their defense makes a lot of calls, sideline to sideline, but also is very physical, you know, within the tackles, playing the run game. And their corners are very physical, which when you have physical corners, they can reroute the receivers early and do some things that, that could throw timing off. So, again, big challenge for our offense. One of the big challenges for Khalil Hodge is going to be the running back for the Chippewas. Jonathan Ward, one of the best running backs in the MAC last year. Uh, with their uncertainty at quarterback, you would suspect they're going to ride the good running back a little more. So do you go into this game thinking stopping the run may be even more important than normal? Absolutely. Now they are using the quarterback some in their run game as well, but but they take him and they they, they use Ward in a lot of different spots. They, they'll use him obviously in the backfield. They'll, they'll split him out, motion and run sweeps with him split them out, run routes with them, find a lot of different ways to put the ball in his hands. All right, so that's a player that Bulls fans and the Bulls defense are going to have to watch. Getting you ready for Buffalo and CMU, all part of our town BMW keys to the game. Coming up, we'll get to know all about the Bulls leading tackler, Khalil Hodge, and learn what makes him a key leader on the defense. That's next on UB Football Insider. Welcome back to UB Football Insider. This segment is presented by Seth Q, changing lives every day. Coming off his career-high 20-tackle performance against Army, Bulls senior middle linebacker Khalil Hodge now leads the MAC and ranks third in the country. But Khalil's story is much more than just playing middle linebacker. As he's shown us, he's not afraid to tackle any challenge. <laughs> Khalil Hodge, number four, linebacker for Buffalo. Crum is going to throw. He's rushed, hit, and sacked. Khalil Hodge, what a play inside. Khalil Hodge again. One of the best in college football. Very productive player coming out of high school. Had some ridiculous, I can't even tell you the exact number, but it was 200-plus tackles, uh, I believe, in, in his senior season. He's been having crazy tackle numbers ever since he started playing. But his senior year, they never lost a home game. I think that he kind of impacted that school, how he's impacting us, you know, just high-intensity guy and just always working hard and bringing people along. Out of high school, Khalil went to uh, City College of San Francisco, one of the really top junior colleges for, for many, many years right there close to home, um, where he really played outside linebacker. So he went there and, and literally played one season. He was there for one semester of, of junior college football. He won a national championship as a freshman at uh, City College. He told me that if he if he could have done another year at JUCO, that he would have had a chance to probably get higher offers and play at a bigger conference. But he wanted to come here and, and and do something special. Khalil Hodge tied a career high with 20 tackles against Army last Saturday. It was the second time he racked up 20 tackles in a game. He now has 67 tackles on the season, which is tied for third in the nation. Bull Jack! Defense ready! Ready! From his first spring here, he was able to embrace what our expectations are about practice habits, finishing plays, hustling on and off, all those things that we feel when they become habits help, help elevate one's game. And he's taken that and he, he's even put a higher level on himself. So it's going to be fourth and 12 from the 13 with 144 to go in the game. With us up, with us ahead in the game, and, and we got to find a way to get a stop it, or they're in the red zone, and Khalil takes a drop. Stands in the pocket. He is pressured. He chases and gets away and throws to the end zone. It's knocked away, and it's intercepted. Intercepted. Yes, intercepted by the ball. A lot of guys might have might have filled him grabbing and kind of let go a little bit and then it would have been a touchdown but you know Khalil yanked it from him and sealed the game for us. Hodge recorded his 300th career tackle against Eastern Michigan on September 15th to become the fastest player in school history to reach that mark. Khalil currently ranks sixth in school history with 344 career tackles in only 29 games, passing former All-American linebacker Khalil Mack. Khalil's a big Raiders fan. He's always watching the Raiders games, always talking about all the Raiders players. Seeing that Khalil Mack went, you know, high in the draft, first first 10 picks. So I think that seeing that as a linebacker and 
and, and having that aspiration to play in the NFL kind of motivate Khalil because, you know, if you see someone in your position do it, you know that it's possible for you. I think that he has a great chance to play at the next level. I mean, his numbers speak for themselves. You know, he has great film. It'd be hard for people to pass on him. This is it for him. He's done a lot of great things going from a, a second team all conference, first team all conference, and, and now he's put himself in a situation that he's been able to accomplish all the goals that he set out to do. And now it's time to get the rest of the team through his leadership to be able to follow through with that as well. You know, it's funny to say, and it's wrong to say, that Khalil got off to a slow start this year, but he didn't have those big tackle games early in the year. And now you look up, and there he is, number one in the MAC and number three in the country in total tackles. Yeah, he's played extremely well, Paul, for, for the last few weeks. And a lot of times that has to do with the, the opponent you're playing, what they're trying to do with the offense. You look at that first game of the year, Delaware State was going to try to get the ball outside, get rid of it quickly. A lot of things that didn't allow him to get into the groove, so to speak, and, and of course, to score the game. Now, now he's he, you know, we need him to, to keep stepping up and doing the things that he's doing. Are you noticing that teams are trying to game plan themselves away from Khalil Hodge? Well, I don't know if you can completely go away from him. I think what you have to do is making sure that you're, you're attempting to get bodies on him or at least somebody on every play, different angles, and, and, and try to do things to disrupt his flow. Um, talk a little bit about what he brings to this team beyond just making tackles and making play on defense. He, yeah, along with James O'Hagan, are one of your two designated all-season-long captains. Um, that says a lot about him. Tell everybody how that decision came about. Well, our, our you know, once again, we put our, our let our players do the voting for captains, and you know, we've had a group of captains for the off season, Paul, as we do our, our our winter conditioning, our summer conditioning, and everyone has a chance to be in leadership positions. And we had, when we've talked about it before, a great group of guys that have done it. But yet, as we go through that time frame, and whether it be stuff on the field, off the field, how they go about it on a daily basis, uh, James O'Hagan and of course Khalil Hodge rose way above their teammates in, in, in perception and voting. You know, those of us that have gotten to know Khalil don't necessarily know him as an overly loud player. He's I don't uh, Maybe he's not an in-your-face player, but that doesn't have anything to do with how good a leader he, a player can be. So how does Khalil go about being the guy that he is, yet having that kind of influence on his team? Well, I think the, the biggest thing is consistency. And, you know, some guys, you know, we always say, you know, don't talk about it, be about it. And he, and, and he definitely is about it on how he goes about it. It's just not production. It's just not knowing the calls. It's being consistent in every day of what you have to do, whether it be in the weight room, whether it be through the conditioning workouts, in the meeting rooms. And, of course, his play backs up all those things. His story that we have chronicled here on this show numerous times is amazing, an amazing example of determination to bypass some offers, to go play junior college, to come commute over an hour a day to do it, to come to Buffalo out of nowhere. I want you to talk a little bit about the whole journey of Khalil Hodge. Well, you mentioned those things. When, when one believes in themselves and, and they're willing to make sacrifices to to make that come come into reality, um, there's no better story than him. I mean, like you said, whether it be um, lower level offers that he thought he could play at the FBS level, whether it be commuting to whether it been high school or junior college and how he was able to get to and from to get those things done, stay on top of his work, be what we call a high school qualifier. He had the grades. He could have went right away instead of going to junior college, coming across the country and being an immediate impact player here at Buffalo. Yeah, one of the true inspirational players on the Bulls football team. Thanks for the insight, Coach. Thank you. Coming up, we take you around UB Athletics to catch up with all the fall sports. Both men and women's basketball get a head start on their first practice of the new season. UB Football Insider continues in a moment. Welcome back to UB Football Insider. This segment is presented by Town BMW, the official auto partner of UB Athletics. Beyond the football team and the exciting start of the basketball seasons, it's been another good week around campus as all of the UB athletic teams continue to dominate. Basketball fans, mark your calendars for Thursday, October 11th, when the Buffalo Bulls men's and women's basketball teams will host their annual Bulls Madness event at Alumni Arena. This free event will be a great chance to meet the players, get autographs, win some prizes, and so much more. Doors open at 7.30 p.m. For more information, check ubbulls.com. 
Cross Country had a strong showing at the Paul Short Invite this weekend. Caleb Koval led the Bulls with a 24th place finish overall in a deep competitive field of 360 runners, crossing the line with a time of 24 minutes and 53 seconds. The Bulls return to action on October 13th as they're set to compete in the Canisius Alumni Invite. The women's soccer team picked up their ninth win in the last 10 matches on Sunday afternoon after defeating Eastern Michigan 2-1 to in overtime. Caitlin Walsh ended the match in the 95th minute with a game-winning goal. Head coach Sean Burke notched his 50th career coaching victory, making him the fastest coach in Bulls Division I history to accumulate 50 wins. You can see the Bulls at home this Sunday as they face off against Ohio at noon. Volleyball went 2-0 on the weekend with a pair of road wins at both Ohio and Kent State. Sophomore Andrea Mitrovic was named MAC Offensive Player of the Week as she broke a 23-year-old record set back in 1995 for her 34 kills against Kent State. The Bulls are home this Saturday as they face off against Ball State at 6 p.m. While we're still in the middle of the fall sports season, it's time to start thinking about basketball. The UB men's basketball team has begun practice to get ready for the season. Your first chance to see them comes up next Thursday at the Bulls Madness event. Of course, it was an amazing year last year for Nate Oates' team, a MAC championship, a win over Arizona in the NCAA tournament. But guess what? They want to take the next step. I told our guys earlier, like we beat Arizona not on a day in March. We beat them on a random day in September when we practiced twice as hard as they did. And we beat them on a random day in October and a random day in November. And that's when you win March tournament games. Like college basketball, anybody can be anybody on any given night. So you got to come ready to prepare. You, you, know, you ain't going to win. It's definitely some pressure to get back and win it, not just get to the championship game like we're expected to win it now so we got to practice like that every day and know that we've got a bullseye on our backs i think everybody knows that now uh we got a big target on our back but i think i think we're ready for it. we work really hard this summer and about to start working hard in the fall so it's gonna be good after my freshman year after we went to the tournament you know that sophomore year we kind of have a really good year so um it's big for us to have you know two really good years in a row um, so that's been something I've been, you know, preaching, um, whether it be, you know, talking to the guys, talking to the young guys, just about staying consistent. Because, you know, like when you're at the top, it's, it's hard. It's hard to fall off, you know. So just, you know, staying consistent with everything, teaching the young guys, the culture and stuff, that's, that's been really big. So really just attacking every day one at a time and, you know, just learning. We got a really good core group of guys, and Perkins has come a long ways in his maturity. So. I like our group. I like our core group that's older like that. Man, we got we got a lot of guys. Guys like Brock Bertram and got a lot of better. The um the young guys, Ron Doan, Nathan Williams didn't come in, you know, they they didn't put a lot of work in, you know, those guys are ready and then Jeremy and CJ looking better than ever right now. And you know, we got the pit bulls, Dante and Vante who I like down anybody in the country, so we got a really deep team, and you know I'm excited to see how it's gonna pan out. It gets even harder just because everybody's gonna bring their A game to a whole nother level when they play against us now. So, but, I mean, it's good. It's gonna make us play our best. We'll be playing our best basketball. If we can get through, you know, the MAC and get to the NCAA tournament again, I think it'll make us better. But we gotta know that we're gonna get everybody's A game every night out. Family on three. One, two, three. Family. Family. The UB women's basketball team is also hard at work trying to follow up their amazing Sweet 16 run from a year ago. Some key players are back. Some new players will play key roles. That's what preseason practice is all about. It's definitely different. I, I'm excited. I'm always excited. I'm always going to be enthusiastic. We got 16 kids, and I'm not afraid to, to play a walk on. We have a great walk on here from Memphis. It's neat to be in a situation where you don't have enough scholarships. 
It feels great to be back out there, especially being out there with the new freshmen. We got new, a whole new seven, so it's great to be out there with such a young crew. This is my first real practice since December 27th of last year, so it was a lot of jitters, but once I got going, once Coach Jack told me to calm down, I know you're excited, it was just like, okay, relax, focus on detail, and just play your game. Like, let the game come to you and just work on getting better. We know what we accomplished la last year, but I mean, we have a, like you said, we have a whole new team, so we have a whole new plan this year. This year, we want to make it further. We want to get to, to the final four. We want to prove that we belong out on this on that stage coach Jack is a phenomenal woman I have phenomenal teammates everybody here wants to work and it's just a lot of motivation in the atmosphere like we all want to go further the people that come play for me are young women who really are fighting hard to become phenomenal women they are very athletic they're very aggressive they're very passionate not by because of the basketball side of things but because they want their story told they want people to see who they are. They want people to visualize them as being somebody of importance. And we're gonna learn about them through the game of basketball. And they've allowed me to be a part of that process. But you have to win that, that, that honor of having your story told every single possession. And hopefully we'll seize the crowd again and we can tell our story. We got down three, one, two, three. Together. Coming up, we take a look at the big plays made by the defense in this week's Karuba Collisions. That's next on UB Football Insider. This is UB Football Insider, presented by ECMC, the difference between healthcare and true care. The Bulls did a good job in limiting Army's potent running attack on Saturday, which means there's plenty to pick from for this week's Karuba Collisions. Here are this week's Karuba Collisions. Kalen Holt now in at fullback. Instead, they hand it to the slot back Cooper. He tries to run up the middle, and Justin Brandon stuffs him for a one yard loss. Nice job there by Justin Brandon fighting up front. He's really played very well against this Army front. This is a pitch to the right, to the tailback Asbury, and he oh. got smoked. He got crushed. Brandon Williams hit him and limits it just a one-yard gain. That's going to be a Karuba collision this week, Paul, for sure. The Bulls flew up there and had a great stick. Luke Langdon will come in, and he will hand it to the fullback, and the fullback gets a whole big armful of DeShondrick. Foxworth, Sandon McCoy got the handoff. Foxworth brings him down for no gain. Follow UB Football on Twitter and choose your favorite Karuba Collision of the Week. Don't forget your first chance to get a look at the men's and women's basketball teams comes up next Thursday. It's the Bulls Madness event right here at Alumni Arena. It starts at 730. Bulls football team on the road Saturday at Central Michigan. A noon start. You can hear it on ESPN 1520. You can see it on the CBS Sports Network. Thanks for watching the UB Football Insider Show with Lance Leipold.